Donald Trump's assistant, a man who was really at Trump's side through a lot of the allegations underway in the Trump prosecution has now been arraigned. We already covered Donald Trump's arraignment some time ago, but Walt, the man seen here, has had some time getting local counsel and getting his arraignment scheduled and completed, but that is now done. And we're gonna go through exactly what happened because this is Trump's only co-defendant in this case. They were both charged together and the allegations are that Trump was orchestrating all of this, move the boxes, conceal this, conceal that. And this Walt individual was the person who helped facilitate it. He was essentially a co-conspirator in the case. So his new lawyer is now Sasha Dayton as local counsel. We'll take a look at the notice of appearance as well as the court minutes. But first, let's get a little bit of background over from Bloomberg and see what they have to say for us. They tell us that he has hired Sasha Dayton. You see, this is some imagery of him walking into court, a lot of press around, because this was a very important co-defendant. This, in fact, was somebody that they tried to turn. We've got allegations from Walt's lawyer that one of the U.S. prosecutors, Jay Brett, may have threatened him or impliedly threatened him by saying, gosh, it would be a shame if you didn't get this judgeship when Stanley Walt's lawyer was applying for a judgeship in DC, hinting that if your client cooperates with us, it's more likely that there will be a good outcome for you. So that was taking place today. Now it's Walt, his personal assistant, but they also call him a valet. An alleged co-conspirator has been arraigned. It's a pretty simple proceeding. We're gonna go through the minute entries. It's about four minutes, five minutes are very fast. But Walt is a former military valet, followed Trump from the White House, became his personal aide at Mar-a-Lago. Brought on former defender Sasha Dayton, a former public defender who's based in Fort Pierce, small city about 130 miles north of Miami. Nauda appeared before a federal judge in Miami, formally entered his plea, allowed free on his personal recognizance pending the trial. The arraignment had been delayed a number of times. They called Dayton. She declined to comment by phone, but she joined Stanley Woodward, and he also declined to comment. Trump has already pleaded not guilty. There is a 38 count indictment. Nauda is described as the body man, right? And presidents have this body man who's just always with them, has everything they need at their beck and call. Nauda was allegedly directed by Trump to so-called move the boxes and conceal them. So the boxes were moved, and we'll go through a little bit more of this as the story evolves. But first, let's take a look at the actual minute entry that was submitted by the court. You can see here, it is only a single page. The date on this, 7-6, it's in Cannon's courtroom, but it's not being conducted by Judge Cannon. Edwin Torres is doing the arraignment here. And as usual, it's very, very brief. You see time in courts, four minutes. Waltin Nauda, all the prosecutors were there. We're very familiar with them. Jay Bratt, David Harbach, Michael Thacker, the defense being led by Sasha and Stanley. Now the charges, conspiracy to obstruct justice. He moved the boxes. Withholding of a document or record. He should have given the documents back and corruptly concealing a document after they were demanded. There was no bond. He's been released on his personal recognizance. And this is something we've always wondered about. Trump, same story here. They're not supposed to have contact with anybody who's a part of the investigation, but that's about it. You see that these are other options on the form. So we're in sort of a favorable jurisdiction right now in Florida, but what happens when we go over to DC and we get judges like we've seen in other trials, for example, in the E. Jean Carroll trial, what happens if we got a judge who's in that similar uh, vein? Do you think if they're dealing with a so-called leader of an insurrection, which is what Trump is gonna be prosecuted under, or something very similar to that, is gonna be let out on his personal recognizance? This is a document possession crime. This isn't overthrowing a country allegation. So maybe in a very similar case, they actually do post a bond, or they post no bond, or they require him to surrender his passport, or, they say, Trump, you've got to report to pretrial services once a week and by phone and once a month by in person. And you've got to do urine testing and you can't have firearms and you have to be done on ankle electronic monitoring and be home by eight o'clock every night, Trump or Walt. Oh, I don't know. I, I never thought Trump would be indicted in the first place, but I think when you take this over to DC, maybe. 
we'll see. Now, this is the record from the court. So as the attorney stood up, uh, you know, appearances, please, everybody, yeah, Your Honor, Sasha Dayton on behalf of the defense, hey, Your Honor, Jay Brad on behalf of the government, blah, blah, blah. It says Sasha has filed a permanent notice of appearance. We'll take a quick look at that. And another motion for Pro Hoc Vice status, which means Stanley Woodward is the probably going to be the lead attorney on the case, but he's not actually licensed in this jurisdiction. So he needs somebody to represent him. He needs somebody to basically sponsor him in court. So he filed his motion. The court directs the clerk to accept any filings for Ms. Dayton. So the court accepts this new lawyer immediately with an expiration date. Anything Dayton needs to do to update her registration can be done with the process in the meantime. Defendant arraigned, and these are very brief. How do you plead? Not guilty entered, jury trial demanded, judge orders discovery to be exchanged, and we're done. Due Process Protections Act is issued, comply with that and then set new dates immediately over four minutes in and out. So we also saw that there were two appearances entered. This is the one that got submitted by Sasha Dayton. This is the notice of permanent appearance submitted in the case U.S. versus Trump and Walt. Counsel acknowledges about advising the defendant. Fee disputes, money, is not gonna be a basis from getting off the case, acknowledged by both Walt and Sasha submitted as a notice of appearance. We also see this is the Pro Hoc Vice designation request. This was submitted by Stanley Woodward. He says that uh, I've got to get this submitted because I'm not licensed to practice in the Southern District of Florida, but I am in DC and Maryland. And so Sasha is gonna be representing me. In accordance, I've already filed my admission fee. This is where you can contact me. And now we move to have me entered. And so this is, uh, has been accepted, it looks like, by the court. And so Trump has his lawyers and Walt has his lawyers. A little bit more about Sasha Dayton. She is a Florida bar licensed attorney, began her legal career at the public defender's office. And we love our public defenders here. Shout out to the public defenders. As an assistant public defender, 3,000 clients, felonies, misdemeanors, DUIs, juvenile cases. She got favorable results, writing, research, while at the public defenders, received 100 hours of continued legal education. This is a major benefit of being a public defender, by the way. So she's compassionate about every case, She's active in her community, member of, of various bars, fluent in Spanish. And so shout out to Sasha Dayton and other lawyers who are uh, out there working on these cases because we know that their practices will come under increased scrutiny. Now there's more. Apparently there was another filing update. Trump had boxes in a storage room. Mediaite, you know these people, look at this. 6,000 comments. Woo, man, they get excited about this stuff over there. So new photo and video emerge from an unsealed search warrant. Apparently some little portions of that original search warrant that we reviewed here was unsealed and it was the photo portion. Why? Because the photos are already out there. This is no longer necessary. It's already public. This is the photo. I am speechless. The warrant says the purpose of the photograph was to show that the volume of boxes that remained in the storage room, the storage photo captures 61 boxes located in the storage room. Okay, well there was like what, 31 different classified documents that he got charged for? There's not even 61 documents that are charged as crimes. So apparently about half of those absolutely cannot possibly have a classified document in them unless the documents are cut in half. That's if you believe that they even have a legitimate case in the first place, if that is Ill illegal in and of itself. They try to prove that any of these boxes are criminal boxes and they want you to think that they are. So even just by numbers, okay, 61 of those located in the storage room, we know that there were about 30 documents, and I've had questions about this, if they were bound up, if these documents were bound together, like one pamphlet could be like 30 documents in other words. So they released this photograph and they're just going hog wild over there. Uh, hopefully they enjoy themselves. Now there are other issues, of course, they're saying that Walt was a part of the conspiracy to move the boxes. And they say they've got surveillance footage. Again, moving boxes day before the visit. Again, okay, you're allowed to move boxes. Were these boxes that had classified documents in them? Again, saying that you think that the possession of the documents is illegal in the first place. Surveillance footage showed that Walt moved dozens of boxes in the days before the DOJ visited. The footage was among other evidence that they used to justify the search according to new details of the warrant. Nauda appeared in court for an arraignment, pled not guilty, and they say that details come to light hours after a federal magistrate judge ordered the department to make more portions of the search warrant available. 
three-page ruling, Reinhardt stopped short of granting the request for media organizations, but they did agree that some portions could be made public. The agent writes that Trump liked to store accumulated documents in the boxes, and the 38-count indictment alleged that he held on to them, that he knew he shouldn't have retained, and that he directed other people to move them around. Prosecutors have alleged that the security cameras showed Nauda moving 64 boxes out of the storage room and later returning 30 of them. Federal judge later went on to rule that attorney-client privilege needed to be breached as the investigation moves forward. So they are now scheduling a deadline in this case. Motions are due by July 24th, 2023. And there will be a lot more as Walt Nauda joins Trump in the prosecution.